Hi. Today I want to take a look at measurements and the uncertainty associated with them. Let's begin by exploring some numerical data that you might collect from, say, an experiment. I've listed some examples over here on the right-hand side. Numerical data can be broken down into two categories. First of all, that which we call exact numbers, for which there is absolutely no uncertainty, and inexact numbers, for which there is some uncertainty. Let's take this data and classify it. First of all, when one records the temperature. The temperature, the accuracy of that device is dependent on perhaps the price of the device. So when we say something is 23 degrees, it could be as low as say 22 or 21 or as high as 25. So that 23 is not exact. However, the number of students in say a particular classroom is 23, that would be an exact number. There's no fractional students. Time similarly would be determined by the device we're using to measure it. It could be give or take a tenth of a second. Also, if one considers reaction time, it might be give or take 0.2 or 0.3 seconds. The mass of an object is also an exact, an exact number. However, the number of seconds in a minute is exactly 60. That's a defined quantity. So we have data for which there is no uncertainty and data for which there is some uncertainty. Let's take a look at that uncertainty a little bit more. Uncertainty can be expressed a couple of ways. One method is what we call the absolute uncertainty, where we list a value, the mean value, and the range of that value by saying what its plus or minus happens to be. So here, for an example, 1.53 plus or minus 0.01 grams means my actual value would lie somewhere between 1.52 and 1.54 grams. Uncertainty can also be expressed in relative terms. Those relative terms can either be as a fraction or as a percentage. And here you see how we obtain it. We take the absolute certainty and we divide it by the reading. And then we express it as a fraction or multiply that fraction by 100 and come up with a percentage uncertainty. A little comment here about something called agreement. When one records data, you want to make sure that you have agreement between the uncertainty and the data you're recording. So here, my 0 0.01 grams is good to the one hundredths column. That means that my recorded data must also be to the one hundredths or to the two decimal places. That we say has good agreement. Here's an example of something that doesn't have agreement. The 1.5 is only recorded to the tenths column, but my uncertainty is good to the hundredths column. This is not what you want to do. You want to make sure that you have agreement. Finally, it's common practice to express absolute uncertainty and relative uncertainty to one significant digit. So hence, it's unlikely you'll see something that says plus or minus 0 0.013 grams. We would just round that off to 0 0.01 grams. How we obtain the um, uncertainty depends on the device we're using to make the measurement. If we happen to have a digital device, such as say an electronic balance, an electronic thermometer, or a pH meter, we re usually record it to plus or minus the last displayed digit. So in this case, when I look at the electronic balance, I see that it's good to the tenths column. That means I would record my data to plus or minus 0 0.01 grams. So the recording I would put down for this device would be 226.0 plus or minus 0 0.1 grams. The uncertainty of an analog device, a device that has scales on it, is usually given as plus or minus half a division. So in this particular case, I look at my device, and in this case, each line represents one milliliter. Dividing that one milliliter by a half, I get 0.5 milliliters. Now the reading on this is somewhere around 24, right on 24, I would say. So 24.0 plus or minus 0.5 milliliters. Notice the agreement that exists in this measurement, that the 0.5 is good to the reading, in this case, to the tenths column, so I want to also record 24 to one decimal place as well, to the tenths column. Finally, there's other sources of error uncertainty that come about with human reaction time and human judgment. So if I'm using, I say, a stopwatch and it records 10, point, 10 minutes, 53 seconds, 0.23, human reaction time is usually generally only good to a tenth of a second. So I should record 10 minutes, 53.2 seconds. Converting that all into seconds, 553 plus or minus 0.1 seconds. But I also may choose to make that error larger. Say I was judging when a reaction was finished by when the time's bubbles stopped appearing. 
I might not be that exact. And in this case, even though it says 10 minutes, 53.23 seconds, I might override that and say, well, based on my judgment, it, it might be plus or minus 10 seconds. And that's quite all right. I can justify it. So in this, I could also use 250 plus or minus 10 seconds. Again, notice agreement here that my 10 seconds is to the tens column, so I'm going to record my data to the tens column. Finally, a last comment about the words accuracy and precision. They're not synonymous. Accuracy is a measure of how close you are to the true or the accepted value. Sometimes that can be expressed as a percentage. We call it the percentage error, where we take the difference between our experiment and the true value, divide it by the true value, and multiply by 100. That's a measurement of how close we are to the right answer, and that is a measurement of the accuracy of a result. Precision has to do with the closeness of a set of results done under the same set of conditions. Let's take a look at a dart game to look at the difference between these two terms. In my first game of darts, the three darts are very close to each other, but they're not very close to the target or the true value, which is the red dot or the 10 in the center. These results indicate a high degree of precision, but they lack accuracy. In my second game of darts, these are more accurate because I'm closer to the 10 than I was in my first one. However, they're not very close to each other, indicating a lack of precision, but more accuracy. And finally, in my last game, where all the darts are close together and near the 10, this is a result which is both precise and accurate. I hope you found that useful and will continue to watch the series that are going to be presented here.